It's 559 and you're watching WOMG Action News, Crazy Town's news leader. And now, your Action News news team. And I'm Babs Buttleby. And I'm Jim Pickles. Thanks for joining us at WOMG Action News. Crazy Town's the only newscast that starts at 559. Therefore delivering you, your news, first. We are coming to you live from our brand new home here at Studio 9. A brand new facility that features world class, touchscreen technology, state of the art weather systems, and oh my gosh, a mini fridge. Tonight's top story, puppies. They can be adorable, but also deadly. For more on this exclusive story, we take you live to South Crazy Town with Don Thickstash. Don? Thanks, Pats. This little fella right here, his name is Patches. And let me tell you, he's as adorable as it gets. His little button nose alone can make a grown man. Oh, my face! He's mauling my beautiful face! Terrific report, Don! And now we turn to our meteorologist, Doris Dotplop of Worldwide Weather. Thanks, Jim. With our brand new state-of-the-art weather system, you'll not only notice that all of our cartoon suns now have high-definition sunglasses, but all of our forecasting has become 100% accurate. That's a relatively high percentage, Doris. Jim, it's almost the highest. Now, if you look here where our studio is located, you'll find that the system is telling us with 100% accuracy that it's 85 degrees with sunny skies. Well, Jim, I guess we should hit the beach. Doris, you do realize our building is in the middle of the worst snowstorm we had in years. <laughs> That's impossible. Doris, the, the snow has literally trapped us in this building. No, no, it says here that it's 85 degrees. Doris, you came to work. And a sweat. <laughs> I'm bad at my job. And that's Doris Dottlebot's worldwide weather. Don't forget your sunscreen. Crime Watch. That deep voice that just said Crime Watch means it's time for Crime Watch. For the latest on crime in your neighborhood, we take you live to our crime specialist, Jay Walker. Okay, you guys, like 10 minutes ago, I was watching a rerun of Cops. Well, I'm not watching it right now because I'm watching Real Housewives. But 10 minutes ago on Cops, they were chasing this dude down the street, and he had a mullet. It was awesome. I also have this friend that works down at the police station. He set it up so I found it's live video from their interrogation room. They just want some dude for questioning. Check it out. Sheldon Grimes, mind if I call you Sheldon? Why am I here? We'll ask the questions around here, Sheldon. But first off, don't touch my teeth. That quilt looks really nice on you. Why, thank you. Shows off your legs. Thank you. Again, why am I here? Like I said, we're going to be asking the questions around here, Sheldon. Still living at uh, 34 Maple Hill Road? I am. Paying down your mortgage on time? Yes. That's what I see here. I also see your respectable middle school teacher. And on the weekends, you work at Crazy Town Chocolates, the largest supplier of chocolate truffles. Kimball there loves chocolate truffles. So you have strong work ethic. You're well liked by your coworkers. You have zero truffle theft? I guess. So to sum up, you're a guy who's polite, works hard, pays his bills, teaches kids, and doesn't steal from work, even while surrounded by chocolate. Tell me, Sheldon, is something wrong with this picture? I don't think so. You sure about that? I'm sorry. 
You sure about that? Is she saying something? I can barely hear her. You sure about that, punk? Hey, hey, easy, Kimba. Walk it off. Walk it off. Listen, Sheldon. I'm gonna cut to the chase. You're considerate, you're benevolent, and overall, you're just a good guy. And we're here to tell you that needs to change. I, I don't follow. Did I commit a crime? Section 8, subsection 12. Resolved. For at least 20% of every day, each citizen of Crazy Town must act like a total jerk face. That means you're required by law to be inconsiderate, self-centered, and generally obnoxious 20% of the time. The national average is 69%. But you, my friend, are at zero. I don't understand. Why is that a law? Why, Sheldon? It's simple. You make the rest of us look bad. Real bad. We've surveyed you for months now, and I'm sorry to say your behavior has gotten better and better. For starters, we've got several accounts of financial improprieties. Kimball, you want to give him a taste of that? March 6th, Sheldon Grimes isn't charged for his Mr. Pib. Informs the Arby's cashier of mistake. Could have saved money. June 8th, Sheldon Grimes steals someone else's $6,000 tax credit. Informs the IRS of mistake. October 12th, Sheldon Grimes plasters Exhibit K all over town. I got some advice for you, buddy. Kick the freaking wallet! Now, if my partner here had her way, she'd be booking you for the maximum sentence, which, of course, is 50 years hard time. It is! I know. Way too lenient. But our new mayor is big on rehabilitation. So we're here to fix this little problem right here, right now. Yeah. So, Joey, send him in. Brace yourself, bud. This is about to get ugly. Sheldon, meet Ricky, the biggest jerk in town. I just farted. Always oh, a pro. So he's this piece of work. Ricky, meet Sheldon, a real decent guy. You make me sick. We need you to whip this piece of work into shape. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gotta walk my dog and leave his poo on the sidewalk, so let's make it quick. Oh, you who did that? I was not the other day. <laughs> let's start with the voicemail from September 8th. Hey, Joey, can we play that back? Hi, Mom, it's Sheldon. Just checking in to see how everything's going with Dad. And to let you know, I'll be stopping by Tuesday to water the plants. I love you both very much. Now let's let the record show that that would have been a class beaten misdemeanor, even if it was for your own parents. But it was for your in-laws. Oh, this guy. You see, Sheldon, most people view their parents or in-laws with a respectable level of disdain, or at the very least, indifference. That's just human nature. Now, our expert here is going to show you how that voicemail should have went. Stop that! Don't talk to her like that. First things first, your mom is so fat, she calls her belt the equator. Second, here's how that voicemail should have gone. Mom, Dad, send money. That was beautiful. Thank you. Now next up, here's your last bank statement. Read that. A fifty dollar donation to the Red Cross. Now why would you do that? Seriously? Okay, but why would you do that, Sheldon? It's a hurricane. This guy. What? That's not how you help this ass to pick them, Sheldon. It's what you first it's what it's not. Ricky, tell this man how you help this ass to victims. Retweet a Kardashian. 
I don't understand. Please, Ricky, tell this man how you help disaster victims. Anytime something bad happens, you don't make a donation, you don't show emotion, you don't help at the release site. Then what do you do? You wait for a Kardashian to post a frowning face on Twitter, and then you hit retweet. Civic duty done. And uh, I'm not giving you time to react to that. But uh, after the Red Sox won yesterday, yeah, you had that little party. Yeah, we got a voice recording of you being respectful of Yankee fans. No! Did, did you bug my house? Our lead informant is your six-year-old niece. Caitlin! Hey, Uncle Sheldon! Agent Parker, yes. After the game ended yesterday, she covertly recorded this. Good game, everyone. I'm just so happy it was an exciting competition. And that none of the players were injured. Would anyone like more salsa? Nobody wanted salsa, okay? The Yankees just lost, dude. Nobody wanted salsa. But also not come, also not on that, comforting hugs. Come on! <sighs> you see, Sheldon, take it easy. I'm supposed to rehabilitate this man, not kill him. That's what I'm supposed to do, teaching how it's done. Uh -huh. But, uh, like I was saying before I got rudely interrupted, I know it's part of the law, but I have a little respect for the law enforcement. This condition is called MWX, or Modest Winning Syndrome. Now the only known cure for it is intense training. So our expert here, like she said, is here to show you how it should have went. Ricky, we're really going to need your F game for this. My whole life has led to this moment. Also, I farted again. Drop the scenario on me. Alright. You're a Sox fan, you're watching it with all your New York friends, and then you just watched Ortiz hit a walk-off double to win the game. All your New York friends are really upset. What's the appropriate reaction? And go! I am the champion, my friend. And you'll keep on losing till the end. I am the champion. You're not the champion. You're afraid of losing. Now listen up, Sheldon. If you want to walk out of here today, your conduct needs to reach new lows. And we're talking half as low as Ricky. We've never asked for four Ricky from somebody. That's a little too much for one man to handle. Unless that man's Ricky. So in short, we need you to walk out of here less Sheldon and more Sheldon. Detective, is becoming a jerk my only option? I'd rather just be a good person. Plan B, buddy, is prison. Let's try plan A. You heard the man, Ricky. Work your magic. Okay, scenario number one. Your friends Dan and his wife invite you to a party. What do you bring? A homemade potato salad. No. A whole foods potato salad. No. A Whole Foods macaroni salad? Come on, Sheldon. Think like Ricky. What do you bring to Stan's party? Stan's bitter ex-wife? There you go! Yes. Yes. Okay, scenario number two. Scenario number two. Scenario number two. Oh, I get it. It's funny that you say number two, as the inherent toilet humor. You got it. Yeah, that's not why I was stepped in for your dog the other day. <laughs> yeah, I'm not dog, man. Well, scenario number three, you're at your nephew's peewee hockey game. And the official makes a bad call. 
What do you do? I ask him to be more reasonable. No. I curse at him. Shout it. I punch him in the face. There it is. All yeah. right, Sheldon. 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 Well, fellas, looks like my work here is done. I want to run my stretch hummers parked across four handicap spots. You are really despicable. Thank you. All right, Sheldon. Are you ready to re-enter society, but this time, a little more like every other jerk in the world? Detective, I got three words for you. I discarded. Hey, you took my team!
for the Crazy Town Elementary School Presidential Debate. I'm Sophia from Miss Brady's class and will serve as moderator. Today's debate will be structured in a town hall format with questions posed by you, the students. Now please join me in welcoming the candidates for your student president, Eddie Grantwood and Caitlin Parker. Welcome to you both. Let's get right into it with some questions from your fellow students who've each given us their name and a little something about themselves. Our first question comes from Lisa Hartley, who's afraid of the dark but still feels that zombies are awesome. If you could describe your candidacy in three words, what would those three words be? Before we get started, I would like to thank the Crazy Town Elementary Election Commission, the entire student body, and my opponent for what I'm confident will be an illuminating and constructive conversation. And if I could describe my candidacy in three words, I would do so as follows. For too long, our student body has been divided into factions of the haves and have-nots. Under my leadership, I will ensure that every student has the equal opportunity to achieve their dreams. Before we get started, I would like to thank the Crazy Town Elementary Election Commission, the entire student body, and my opponent, where I'm confident will be a constructive and illuminating conversation. I would also like to thank the Tooth Fairy, someone my opponent did not thank, presumably because she isn't a true believer. <sighs> Furthermore, since my opponent did not mention it, Sophia's birthday is tomorrow. Happy early birthday, Sophia! Now, if I can describe my candidacy in three words, I will comply with Lisa's limit and do so as follows. My goals include... Don Francisco, who this one time saw a PG-13 movie while her parents weren't home. Whoa! Your parents let you That's so cool! I can't do that! Oopsies. <laughs> <laughs> I love tater tots. What's your stance on tater tots? Teary tatery! I love tater tots! I love tater tots too! I like tater tots. I like them more. An excellent question, Don. Over the last decade, our school has seen a disturbing decline in the overall quality of talk. This is why I pledge to reinstate the legislation known as a lot of talks, which requires by law that all school lunch trays adhere to my PPPPPP pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, these are difficult times, but make no mistake, I will win the war on taterism. Look, I'm not going to beat around the potato bush. Tater tots pull at 99.4%. That's a higher approval rating than ice cream trucks. In other words, if you hate tots, then you hate America. And I don't hate America. Unless it's opposite day. Wait, is it opposite day? It's not opposite day. Then I love America. My point is, the more tots, the better, of course. But do we honestly believe that we need more cafeteria bureaucracy? Under my Lunchbox Lovers program, you will say goodbye to big government lunches and say, hey, what's up, to putting the power in your hands. Want to bring in a wheelbarrow of tots? Then you can do it. Because that's what freedom looks like. Because folks, it's time that we leave behind the days of cardboard gray pizza, half thawed green beans, and worst of all, and I hesitate to use the M word, milk. Ew! I know. But chocolate milk is good. 
Instead, we, the people, can decide what's for lunch. Be it tater tots, corn dog lunch bowls, or, and this is most important of all, fruit. Oh my god. Bye. The next question comes from Brendan Slattery, whose career goals include <coughs> Batman. <coughs> Batman! You're going to be Batman someday? Yeah. <laughs> Those are really, really gross and have cooties. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brendan. Gender issues are a critical part of this election. And I thank you, not only for bringing it up, but for also not being a stupid girl. Girls are indeed gross, and that will always be the case, despite what my big brother Jim says, which is why on day one of my administration, I will repeal the student council's short-sighted verdict in awesome girls versus silly boys. on the wrong side of history. No, he's not. Awesome girls versus silly boys is our generation's most influential ruling, which is why I would throw my full support behind it and ensure the CDC eradicates every strand of cootie and cow for the pain and advantages pursuant to the yanking of pigtails. That is outrageous. Pigtail yanking rights have been in our place since the days of our forefathers. You take that away, what next? Our water balloons? I'll give you my water balloons when you pry them from my cold, wet hands. We'll need to move on to the next question, guys. Sophia, before we do, I'd like to point out that my opponent is a girl, and is therefore, by the transitive property of gender, totally gross. And I'd like to point out that my opponent is a boy, who in a few years will do a total 180 and try to impress me with cheap cologne, while I reject it for someone with a driver's license. The next question comes from Alicia Buck, who drew this picture all by herself. Whoa, you're in Boris! I know! So, Sophia, and Caitlin, and Eddie, what is your stance on the growing opinion that Timmy should take a shower? Timmy <laughs> stinks! I smell like dirt! Dirt is good! Thank you, Alicia. I believe that this issue is a bipartisan one, and that I speak for both candidates when I say that Timmy should very much, most definitely, take a shower. The two of us don't always agree on everything, but I think we can set aside our differences and reach across the aisle to work together on a solution. Because, simply put, Timmy smells terrible. Timmy smells like terrible! Girls, what? No, I don't. Yes, you do! Put your shoes back Girl. on! All right, guys, settle down. And we all know Timmy smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> and for our next question, we turn to our Twitter feed. At ChunkyMonkey12 asks, Yo, trolls, toast lulls, R-O-F-L, DM me with pics, hashtag below. What does that mean? What do pics What's a hashtag? What does hello mean? Well, that was a waste Lots of time. Of Our next question comes from Emily Winston, who recently got mustard on her shirt. I don't like mustard, do you? No, <laughs> I don't like mustard. What? In recent months, there has been some debate as to the veracity of the holiday icon known as Santa Claus. What's your stance on Santa Claus? Santa! He's coming soon. Bring us a point. First, let's be clear. Santa is real. Irrefutably real. He forms the very bedrock of our belief system and our candy-based economy. 
Nevertheless, it is time for serious reform for all things Kringle. His jolly demeanor notwithstanding, Mr. Claus outsources hundreds of good American jobs overseas to his North Pole sweatshops, which violate our entire compendium of elven labor laws. This is a man whose reindeer powered aerial transport system is both unsanctioned and blatantly paid and non compliant. And given the growing obesity epidemic, should we ignore his impudent disregard for the food pyramid? With milk and cookies alone, he exceeds the recommended daily value of saturated fat by 5,000%. In summary, Santa is real, yes, but not immune to regulatory scrutiny. Mr. Claus is not and has never been too big to fail. <laughs> A vote for Caitlin is a vote against free toys. The next question comes from Lisa Hartley, whose favorite candy is all candy. We live in a difficult time with difficult challenges. With that in mind, how many jumbo marshmallows can you fit in your mouth? I think she can fit like a hundred. That's a lot. No, it's not. I don't smell bad. You don't smell like dirt, so yes, you do. <laughs> Quiet. 
That's a fine question, Rebecca. If anyone has Crazy Town Elementary School pride, it's me. As you know, our mascot is the Northern Elephant Seal, which I always proudly display here on my lapel. As I look around the student body, I see so much Northern Elephant Seal pride in. Oh, I'm just now realizing that my opponent does not wear a lapel pin. How fascinating. I suppose school pride isn't for everyone. Isn't it compelling that my opponent must overcompensate with outward appearance because of his inner lack of school spirit? True spirit isn't about what's here. It's about what's in here. And by in here, I'm of course referring to this elephant seal's handkerchief in my pockets. As you can see, it is noticeably larger than my opponent's lapel pin. Folks, we all know that school pride isn't just about size, but about quantity. Not only do I wear this pin, but another seven right here. Whoa! That's a lot of That's a billion! I've got so much school pride that Northern Elephant Seal is my middle name. And I mean that literally, as my name has been legally changed to Caitlin Northern Elephant Seal's Parker. Wow! Wow! How did you do that? That's awesome! Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, my ringtone. <laughs> Alas, my opponent just played the call of the Western Elephant Seal. The Northern Elephant Seal actually sounds like If my opponent had true school pride, she would bark with the traditional crane's neck and sand flipping motion, like so. Well, I can appreciate my opponent's valiant effort at an impression, it will pale in comparison to the real thing.
drugs, made an entire 24 hours without cheating on his wife. Also, the world of baseball was rocked when some guy scored without performance enhancing drugs. Also, the world of professional ping pong was rocked when it was discovered that there is such a thing as professional ping pong. And now, we take you to our live, exclusive coverage of some other sports thing. <laughs> Just might. I'll tell ya, I have literally got goosebumps. Feel my arm. Those are indeed literal goosebumps. Merv, there is no love lost between these two fierce competitors, and I simply cannot wait for this literal clash of the titans. Well, wait no further, as we head to the starting lineups with public address announcer, Roddy Wilcox. Crazy Town, make some noise! Yeah. At 6'3 from Syracuse, he's a grown man with a job, but still plays video games. Donald Baxter! Yeah. At 5'4 from Kentucky, she's still single due to her fear of commitment and over reliance on Bath and Body Works spread. Michelle Falcon! Now Merv, as we get started, I will repeat what I've said all week, which is that this entire game hinges on the first quarter. It's all about which player establishes themselves early. But so far, Tim, we are seeing a tepid start from both. And that's certainly not what we expected. No question about that, Merv. We're seeing a whole lot of staring straight forward with no eyeball movement. And in this league, you have to have eyeball movement. But Murph, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We both know how explosive these two can be, and how this game can turn like that. As if on cue, Donald Baxter is the first move, and what a move it was! Murph, I said it during the Crazy Town Coffee Center pre-show. Baxter loves to start strong, and today is no different. What a way to set the tone. But so far, Felton has simply not responded. I don't think her head's in the game, Merv. Another strong move by Donald Baxter! Merv, is that what I think it is? That is indeed a Tostito scoop. I'll tell you, Merv, Felton still looks lost out there. There's still no eyeball movement of any kind. You have to wonder if she's 100%. Baxter goes for a double. No, a triple dip! How often do you see that? Wow, Merv, this could get ugly. Felton will need to focus, or she'll be unable to climb out of this early hole. Out of nowhere, Felton accepts her attention. What a move by an inanimate object! 
Skeletons to fly a focus can only mean one thing, Merv. Fantasy team. My goodness! This is way out of character, Merv. Felton hasn't been fantasy flight since week one, when she spent an hour on the can researching sleeper picks. Felton reaches for the remote. Here comes the channel change. Denied! She's trying to check on her fantasy players from another game, but Felton and these remotes are simply not on the same page. She now changes the input source from HDMI to AV1. What an embarrassment! Merv, the last thing you want to see is an early fumble. Ooh! Bastard! Steal the remote with authority! Classic home field advantage. You just gotta love his remote control control. It's a blowout! Baxter may go for the juggler with some aggressive play calling. He may even spring for a beverage. Baxter's fades the field. He fades left. Juke's right! And an unexpected move to the Cherry Coke! Unbelievable! Merv, what a huge departure! Ever since college, Baxter has lived and died by the Pepsi family of products. We never expected a Coke, let alone a special Coke. What a bold move. Baxter is getting cocky, and I love it. But I don't know where Baxter is stuck in the line of twistage. He simply refuses to open. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a recalcitrant gap! Merv, after such a powerful start, we're finally seeing Baxter's Achilles heel, which is, of course, the opening of common beverages. 20 seconds have come. And 20 seconds have gone! We may witness history here, Merv. The time to beat is 28 seconds. Oh my! Oh my! Donald Baxter just shattered the world record of beverage incompetence! But now, let's see if Felton will take advantage. A diving grab by Felton! And she opens it! It was a twist off, Merv! My goodness! What a mental error by Donald Baxter! And he knows it! Look at his face! Look at his body language. That will haunt him for life. Tim, could this be the spark that Michelle felt him so desperately needed? No question about it, Merv. Baxter felt him continue the battle, with felt him gaining ground. Ooh! Rejected! That has to be one of the best block shots I've ever seen in my 20 years of watching dudes watch sports. Get that out of here! And Baxter just can't believe it. He is still hanging out to dry. Oh no, what is he going to do? I think he might. Ooh! Donald Baxter pretends he is stretching! Oh, Merv, that is not what you want to see. But you know what? This is where the rookie's fresh legs come into play because the aging veteran is now simply unconscious. The open mouth will not be denied. No question about that, Merv. You know, I mentioned this yesterday on the Toyota Tundra radio show. Felton loves to catch her opponent sleeping. This is where she's at her best. And here we go. We're seeing exactly that right now. <coughs> and the ball is on the head! There goes Felton's signature move, the Fiesta Bowl. But now, will she take full advantage? What's this? Could it be? It could! Donald Baxter just got Instagram! That will sting. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tied! What an astonishing comeback by Michelle Felton! No question about it, Merv. But I would not be surprised if this game was tight from now on. Both these players are hungry for victory. Felton surveys her options. She's got a wide open man. Donald Baxter.
master. He came out of nowhere to pick his hot pocket. And now he begins to multitask. It may well be the most irresponsible multitasking in league history. He's now going next level by answering an email from his boss. And hold on, Merv. I do believe he just began web chatting with his infant niece, and he is barely paying attention. Oh my! What a below average uncle! Merv, I have never seen anything like this. Baxter is simply locked in. But you have to wonder if he's leaving himself vulnerable. Oh, here comes Felton with the backdoor cut. And what a spectacular steal! Merv, this is epic. It appears that Felton has hijacked Baxter's Facebook page and is posting a fake status update. For more, we take you live to our Olive Garden when you're here, your family, on Limited Breadsticks Facebook Zone. Hey, that makes me hungry. Let's break for dinner. What do you want to eat? Hmm. Have you heard of bag of chips? Oh, you know, I think it's pronounced bag of chips. Oh. Martha, take it over for Tim and Murph. Noah, let's take a look at that Facebook post. I heart bunny rabbits. How emasculating. Martha, once Baxter got Instagram, you knew it was only a matter of time before some good old fashioned social media retribution. I'm still on MySpace. No, Martha, we've reached the final minutes, which means these players are going to have to dig deep. They survey the spread. There is not much edible remaining on the field. Bear in mind, they aren't any tater tots, despite their 99.4% approval rating. And out of nowhere, Felton attacks the same buffalo wing she finished hours ago. Now, uh, let's see how Baxter responds, given the limited options. He looks down the field, pump fakes, goes deep, and he drains five crumbs from an empty bowl of chips. Neither player is backing down. They will literally eat anything to avoid walking ten feet to the kitchen. Oh. And Felton unloads a used ketchup packet. But here comes Baxter, who knocks down a couch cushion sour patch kid. But here's Michelle Felton from downtown. A banana? A banana? She's eating a banana? Nutrition? From a sports fan? Marva, I am literally speechless. How about that? Wait a minute. Oh no. It looks like Baxter's down. His heart and colon are on fire. No question about it, Marva. But at the same time, you can't be surprised. Both of them continue to stuff their fat faces even when they were clearly at capacity. And this after Baxter's rehab with last year's seven layer dip. Seven debilitating layers. Marva, this crowd has gone silent. You could hear a pin drop. We now kindly ask our home viewers to say a prayer for a full recovery and to honor this brief moment of silence. What's this? He's okay? He's okay. He's going to be all right. Thanks, goodness. And don't look now, but he's getting right back on the field. What a fighter. You gotta love the guts on this guy, Marva. What courage! What a warrior! What a true hero! This is a man you want to go to battle with, and it is in no way disrespectful that we that we occasionally equate sports to actual war. Not in the least! Now, Marva, in these final seconds, we will see which fan turns out to be a loser, and which fan also turns out to be a loser? Ten seconds on the clock with the game on the line. Here comes the final play. Oh, yes, yes. Oh my goodness, this is the greatest game I have ever seen, at least since last week. What a finish, Marva. This is the happiest day of my life. Better than my wedding for the birth of my child. 
Not so fast, Tina. I do believe we have a GoDaddy.com challenge flag. Oh boy, here we go! The officials will have to review the final sequence. <laughs> Good golly, Miss Molly. Well put, Marva. Let's watch the replay to see what the officials are looking at. First, we have the dance move sequence. Oh no, Marva. I did not notice this in real time, but Baxter is intensely biting his lower lip. Oh my. And is spelting the wind the cabbage patch? Talk about old school. Michelle felt living in the past. That could cost them. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that hug. Right away, we see a voice left eye. And what's Baxter doing with his phone? Donald Baxter watching a video of cats playing with yarn. This is uglier than I thought, Martha. Let's hope at least the hip hop is clean. Wait a minute. Did they even make contact? It may be too close to call. Let's watch that again, this time in Crazy Town Friendship Society Super Saiyan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> they cannot connect. Marva, this is remarkable. The officials have indicated that all penalties are off saying. Which means we are going to go overtime. <laughs> no question about it, Marva. This entire game will all come down to a sudden death verbal shootout where each player will actually have to speak words to each other. A verbal shootout? Tina, is this the first time ever that two players will exchange actual words? It will, Marva. And I don't mind telling you, this will be riveting! And the officials are set to start this overtime thriller. Hold on to your hats because here we go. What time is it? Four. Oh my goodness, it's over, it's over. Felt speaks fewer words than Baxter and comes out with a stunning overtime thriller victory. Do you believe in miracles? Actually, shouldn't be considered miracles because they're actually pretty insignificant. No question about it, Mama. No question about it. Well, folks, we have just witnessed the apex of greatness. Everything from here on out will be bitter, depressing disappointment. But don't change that channel. Next up, a replay of the game you just saw. Tina and I will certainly be watching. Good night. Jessica with a riveting performance with Michael 
But unfortunately, we're going for just seconds away from half past the hour, which means we're going to have to stop broadcasting soon. So that also means we're going to have to not talk about these fallen stories. The city will run out of oxygen by midnight. Several thousand zombies have risen from the local cemetery. And most important of all, Chicago Cubs have finally won the World Series. From everyone here at WOMG Action News, I'm Babs Buttleby. And I'm Jim Pickles. Good, Good night. night. Good night.